or waiting for a few people to get on here, I just want to give a little rundown. I thought it'd be fun this week to um, highlight some of the cool artists and uh, people that do work for conservation in the art world for uh, tra not only Trout Unlimited, but um, other publications as well. So I thought I'd kick it off with a good friend of ours, Garrison Doctor. Him and his wife Corinne uh, own Rep Your Water here based in Colorado. And uh, Garrison, uh, first and foremost, is an insane artist. Um, some of the stuff that he does, um, shirts, hats, uh, drawings that you've probably seen recently online are top notch and um, frankly just incredible. So um, I'd like to pick his brain a little bit today and see you know a little bit about uh what he can tell us for us folks that uh maybe don't draw a lot or don't um play around with the art world so i think it'd be pretty cool if you guys want to follow along ask some questions um get involved with garrison here and we'll see if we can grab him here on this call so i'm sure he's waiting for us so let me uh join him in and see what we can do Oh, that's me. Hi, Corinne. <laughs> Hi, Josh. <laughs> and that's Corinne's forehead, everybody. <laughs> the beauties of live. And the camera is flipped. It's cool. My, uh, my, the sun just decided to peek out here. So give me a second so I can like avert some of this crazy light coming in here. Okay, oh, perfect. I didn't realize how gnarly it was going to get. It's still a little gnarly. Hold on. Um, how are you, Garrison? I'm doing good. I uh, just poured myself a bourbon here in a uh, shameless plug for our Rep Your Water Old Fashioned glasses. So I got the flies floating, which is uh, always kind of where I like to be. And uh, shout out to Smoke and Connie. Got some smoke citrus in here. So we're Ooh. doing all right, John. Nice. You're living nice today, then. I appreciate that for a yeah. Monday. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. I've got a couple of those glasses myself. Uh, a friend of mine actually just dropped off. What was it? Uh, Barrel-aged Manhattans on our front porch the other day. Sounds fantastic. Yes, it is. I love it. It's top-notch, and the glasses go well with that. So. Perfect. Um, well, I just want to thank you for joining us today. Um, like I was giving a little intro before, uh, for those of you watching, this is Garrison. Before, five seconds ago, was Corinne. Um, they're the dynamic duo behind uh, the popular brand Rep Your Water based in Colorado. Uh, you guys are about 20 minutes up the road from me. And yep. uh, um, I get to run into you guys often, fish and photograph and all kinds of fun things. So um, I just, uh, you know, want to kick it off tonight and say thanks again and we'll figure this out. But uh, as we go along, um, tell us a little bit about what you want to do tonight here for this. Well, we can talk about kind of art in general and my inspirations, uh, maybe just briefly kind of the genesis of Rep Your Water as related to kind of how that started and, and to my art as well. And then um, I have like a little 10 minute uh, demonstration on how to draw a trout that I thought would Sweet. be fun because... Cool. Uh, you know, a lot of people have a little bit more time at home these days and are picking up some new hobbies. So I thought yeah. we could do like a real basic how to draw a trout 101 in 10 minutes or less. And that could be fun. I'll put a clean sheet up here on the board and, nice. uh, and we can go from there. Cool. Um, speaking of new hobbies, do you guys, uh, are you picking up any new hobbies these days? You know, what's funny is, uh, I guess, you know, we're very fortunate, like we're still able to ship stuff out of our uh, warehouse here in Colorado. So we're still able to fulfill direct orders. So nice. we're still pretty busy doing that. And then um, between my art and new designs for Rep Your Water and all of our marketing stuff, uh, it's been pretty busy over here. I actually haven't had as much time to be uh, filling as I thought I maybe would, I guess. Right, right. Well, that makes sense. And I'm glad to hear that you guys are still shipping orders. And, and for those of you watching, again, this is Garrison with Rep Your Water. Uh, these guys are amazing. Um, we'll get into the backstory, but just a quick download is 
is that um, not only do they do great work, make great products, but a lot of it comes back to Trout Unlimited and, and the rivers that we love and protect. So um, we can't thank you enough for that. And so I would encourage everyone, of course, blanket encouragement to support those businesses that support what our mission and what we do and kind of line up in the same world. So I think that's incredible. But um, why don't we just fire it off? Uh, give me a give me a give me a download on how this all began and uh, a little bit of it about your background, if you don't mind, Garrison. Yeah, sure. Well, I have been drawing and doing art my whole life. My both of my parents are artists in very different ways, um, but that's kind of been a part of who I am since I was really, really little. And then I did go to college and studied fine art, um, did really large scale wildlife art pieces uh, for the most part. Um, so my background is there. In terms of the Rep Your Water piece, uh, my passion has always been fly fishing. Nice. I mean, given the choice, don't get me wrong, I've always will draw and it's something that I will do my whole life, but given the choice, I'd probably go fishing. So <laughs> that's been a passion my whole life. Um, and Rep Your Water was really just a, a melding of the two. Um, you know, I was guiding in one of our local shops here and looking at all the kind of apparel that was out there and hats and, and stuff that was available. This was um, nine years ago almost, I guess. Right. Uh, and there really wasn't at the time a lot that was available besides like a, a larger fly fishing brand or a specific shop, you know, and I thought, well, I think it'd be cool if there was like a Colorado design and I think people would like that. And that very quickly got the wheels turning for Corinne and myself uh, both about what we could do there. And then also the conservation piece. Um, you know, it, it was really early on, like, hey, if we're going to make this, this series of designs of apparel and, and things that speak to a specific location, we wanted right. to push back to that place. Um, we wanted to push back to conservation, but not just to like a, you know, very broad, but like, hey, we're gonna support Colorado Trout Unlimited for our Colorado here, you know? That's cool, that's yeah. cool. So it kind of started in Colorado and then you guys uh, ended up, you know, switching more towards the national outfit as well and supporting them too, right? Yeah, absolutely. We have a hat for every state at this point, um, but we we do a lot of and kind of my favorite stuff really these days is, you know, like this hat that I'm wearing, which is a, a brook trout piece that I did. It's based off of pastel. And it obviously isn't state specific, but just speaks more to the uh, the sport, the places and the fish that we love. Right, right, right. Well, I'm supporting some Colorado love here. This is one of my favorite t-shirts actually. Uh, hey, we appreciate you. I can't take it off. So, um, well, that's cool. Um, I think I, I've got a couple questions for you as we keep going. I know I saw somebody popped in here and mentioned, uh, you know, who's your favorite artist? Like kind of where do you draw your inspiration from? I mean, you know, all of us, I'm a photographer and filmmaker and I've got, you know, kind of my set, you know, people I go to, I enjoy looking at. Do you have one in particular or a few in particular? You know, I do have many, many artists. It's, it's, it's great to be inspired all the time by seeing what other people do. I mm. tend to be like a, I gravitate towards very tight, more technical, realistic type of work. And so I really appreciate, you know, somebody like Derek DeYoung, who can be a little bit more abstract and loose in, right. in what they're doing and kind of just let it rip a little bit because I need to push myself to be able to do that, you know? So I love, you know, that type of work and looking at inspiration in that type of work in the fishing world. Right. Somebody also mentioned another question came in. Uh, uh, do you have a favorite medium? It seems like you do a lot of pastel kind of chalk or what, uh, how, how does that work? What's your favorite? Yeah, I do. I do a lot. This this is a brown trout that I was actually working on uh, last Friday on a little live art session that we did. Um, and this is charcoal and pastel. It's one of my favorite mediums. And I'm going to show you guys, you can see kind of up above here, one of uh, a new series of cutthroats that I just finished. Actually, they're not all cutthroats, but a new series of Western native trout um, that I just finished that I'm calling the Western Studs series. Nice. Also in pastel and uh, charcoal. I do love that medium, but 
I really like uh, super simple mediums. Like I love pen and ink too. Yeah. Um, and I love watercolor. I, I haven't been working as much in watercolor lately, but I do love watercolor. I would say to everybody out there who wants to like get into drawing a little bit, yeah, don't get too caught up in like having a certain paper or certain pastels or certain pencils. Like you can do amazing things with a single pen and a white piece of paper. Right. And you know, that process of looking at shapes and translating them onto paper right. is so fun and so rewarding and you don't need anything special to do it. Right. Right. You know? um, yeah. Cause a lot of these things kind of, kind of, you know, derive from doodling and notebooks or napkins or, you know, little sketches here and there when you're in between things, right? I would exactly. So, exactly. Yeah, yeah. and I kind of, I mean, I, I actually, uh, I really like that point. Um, based off of my field, my medium is photography and film. And I think, you know, a lot of people get caught up in having the latest and greatest camera. And, you know, oh, that was a great picture. You must have a great camera. Um, and it's like, well, you know, we can do this with anything, um, you know, given the circumstances, it's really about the, you know, I'm a firm believer in the 10,000 hour uh, school of thought that, you know, you just do it enough, you do it enough, and you're just trained to, you know, get after it. So yeah, absolutely. I mean, you can take incredible photos with a very basic camera, right? And you can make incredible drawings with a ballpoint pen. You know? Right, right. So right right and yeah. uh I, just to mention garrison also is a photographer he he uh he likes to dabble out there i know you've got a lot of work that you show even on i'm your a heavy a heavy dabbler but i do call my buddy josh and just sort of have to ask some questions every once in a while <laughs> somebody just asked if you tie your own flies also and that's a good I one, right? do tie my own flies i love tying flies i actually have a couple of patterns uh coming out soon uh with Umqua, which I'm excited about. Nice. And if you're if you're stoked on fly tying, I'm doing a live on Rep Your Water on Wednesday, which I'm kind of nervous about because I haven't done a lot of live fly tying previously, but I'm gonna tie a couple of Golden Dorado flies because I love Golden Dorado. So check that yeah. out if you're Yeah, you guys just featured a bunch of the stuff you did from your trip down south to Jurassic Lake too. And that stuff's incredible. And God, those fish are amazing too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta come down there and take some photos with us one day. You'd have a heyday. Oh man, don't yeah, don't I, I might take you up on that too. Yeah. So, yeah. Um. Uh, what I was gonna ask, like, uh, one one of the questions, you know, we you work a lot in this medium. You you own your own company that's based off of um, a lot of your artwork and your passion. There, do you find time to do this in your spare time these days, or is it merely like uh, you know like uh, i gotta shut it down at some point or is your brain just kind of always trained mm -hmm. to think about other things you want to be working on yeah you know i love doing some stuff that's just like i the wheels get turning and i want to draw this because i want to draw it and there's right. no uh justification from that from like a uh a rep your water line perspective or anything like that it's just like hey this is something that I'm really stoked to draw and see how it turns out. And right. you never know where that leads and you never know where that series leads or if it turns out or not. But uh, I do find time and you have to make time, I think, for that creativity to just sort of let it rip and uh, and see where it goes. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I suppose, uh, uh, just real quick interjection here. Somebody just mentioned that uh, they really thanked you a lot. Their daughter loved the coloring pages you put out. So. Oh, awesome. I really appreciate that. We had fun uh, making those up and, and we'll be uh, we'll be doing a couple more here, I think, as well. So stay cool. tuned, but appreciate that. It's been really fun to watch all those come back. Right, right, right. That's cool. Um, I guess uh, one other thing, you know, I wanted to talk about, um, I guess, how how did you end up getting hooked up with uh, Trout Unlimited specifically? Um, where did that origin come from? I mean, you you guys had your kind of conservation angle and ethic there. Um, where did TU come into play there? Right. Well, Corinne and I are both Colorado natives. We're both from Boulder, and uh, Corinne is a seventh generation Coloradan. So we're 
we have trout, especially. I mean, we love fly fishing for all species and, and globally, and we've been lucky enough to do some of that, but we're trout fishermen at heart for sure. So right. when we started making the line and we were just kind of coming up with some Colorado stuff, obviously it was trout themed. And right. then Corinne was familiar with a local brewery uh, that started actually right by a house that I grew up in in Boulder called Upslope Brewing. And they had a program going for one of their beers that donated to Colorado Trout Unlimited. Nice. And we were trying to figure out how to push back uh, some money to conservation and some money you know, that went to Colorado. And uh, so Corinne did some, some research and, and made some calls and we, we set some things up and that's kind of how that, how that originated because they'd made that connection. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, Upslope's a good partner. In fact, I, I, I'm not, I would be lying if I said I didn't have an Upslope in one of your koozies right here. Perfect. At the moment, you know, the brown Perfect. nails, kind of the, the jam for me. We so. have some some things in the potential cooker with them that we're excited about. And that's nice. all, all I can say there. But we like them, too, and we like their beers. So. Oh, man, they're solid choices. It's, yeah. it's kind of my go-to. So. There you go. <laughs> um, so talk a little bit about... Uh, Talk a little bit about starting. Maybe we can kind of move, uh, pivot a little bit there. If uh, folks are out there and they're curious about getting started, what's the best place to go? I mean, you know, one of the things I always wonder about folks like yourself that draw, it's like, is it coming from memory or, or is it coming from a photograph that you take? Or is this, is this something, uh, where are you drawing from, I guess? Yeah, so it depends. I mean, um, I'm going to pin up a white sheet here real quick. Yeah. And we're going to go over just like some basic <clears throat> steps. I'm going to try to keep this moving pretty quick. So if you don't want to draw along with us, people, just sip a cocktail and hang in there. And it'll um, be on, for the record, it'll be on our stories for 24 hours. And all there the you go. There yeah. you go. Or better yet, grab a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil, whatever you have handy. Right. And you can just draw along with me. But in terms of being from memory or being from photograph, what I'm going to do right now is just from memory. Right. Um, just because I've drawn so many trout, but that comes with repetition. Right. So definitely, I would say if you're starting out and you're wanting to get into some drawing, um, look at reference material for right. sure. I mean, you this whole process, I think, is being able to see in your mind what you're putting on paper, and that comes with seeing what's out there, right? right. So you have to be looking at as much reference material as you can. Yeah. To do that, you know do you have days where it's like you just got to put it down because it's just not working um you know every once in a while i'll get kind of carried away with something and i'm like yeah this one got away from me a little <laughs> bit but you know usually if i push myself through it will come around eventually it's right. just there's a point at time at which i'm like I'm fighting it and I feel like I've kind of lost it. And sometimes you need to take a little space. Right. Right. You know, to and do that's that. good, right. To come back to it and kind of recenter and exactly where you want to be, you know? Yeah. All right. So can you see me here, Josh? I got you. Yeah, the whole frame right there. Perfect. You got, okay. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to talk about drawing a trout here real quick. And also this template will work on, really any species of salmonid that you want to draw right okay so we're going to start here with just like an elongated kind of symmetrical oval all okay. right and this is going to be kind of the basis of the body and i'm going to do the head pointed this way right so we can think about this is going to be kind of the upper jaw I this might, hold on guys i might tilt it a little bit just because the questions are over oh yeah i know what you're saying Great. as a yeah yeah i got you that's corinne behind the Hold camera on. <laughs> yeah. executive producer here no that's good corinne okay it's a different view for you josh as a host than it is for a viewer yeah and i think one of the things that i found uh instagram live too if you like double tap on the screen or something it like compacts the comments. That's true. Bit. Yeah. If you tap on the comments, it should shrink them down. I yeah. think. Okay. Anyway. Are you reading me, Corinne? Can you yeah, see me here? Good now. All right. So this is going to be sort of the top of the upper jaw, right? This is going to be the basis for the back of the fish. All right. 
So now we're going to think about the narrow area at the base of the tail. The tail is the caudal fin. So we're going to do this. This base of the tail area is called the caudal peduncle. And we want just a nice kind of big triangle on the tail. All right. So we'll right. come back to that. Right. Okay. And then this, there's a flap on the upper jaw of all salmonids here. Okay. And it gives it kind of a qu quintessential salmonid look. Right. right. So we want to kind of get that in and then we're going to think about a bottom jaw. Now, if we're, if we're drawing like a big male fish, like we could be thinking about a big kite there, right? Right, right. Uh, but this kind of be the, the basis. And I think uh, the tail's probably a little big and the head's probably a little big, but we're going to make it work. Maybe this is like a small creek fish, right? <laughs> I love it. Okay. So the belly, like we're going to carry this back and then there's usually sort of a, a little bit of a line that cuts up here for the anal fin. So we're yeah. going to keep like kind of a deep belly and then cut up for the anal fin. Okay. Yeah. And then working from the head and this head, like it says, maybe a little big, but this is a Creek fish. So we're going to like it. Um, <laughs> We're going to think about the gills. So there's a, a first gill plate here, right? Right. And then the primary gill plate a little further back. And I, we always want to be thinking about some basic proportions here. So I'm trying to work really fast for you. Right, guys right, home, right. Yeah. Um, I think proportionally, like I said, this head size is probably a little bit big. We're like almost a quarter of the body it also right. depends on the fish right like a big spawning male brown will have proportionally a huge head yeah right compared to their body um, right. but generally speaking like less than a quarter of that fish is going to be head for sure okay yeah. Yeah. so if that's our primary big gill plate right like what i and I'm going to take, this is just a, a kneaded eraser that'll kind of like lift, lift up some of this charcoal just a little bit for me. Right, right. And I'm just But you kind of, I mean, it seems like you kind of go with the flow a little bit in the sense of like, yeah, that didn't work. It's okay to just kind of, you know, get it, you know, redo and kind of reset. And yeah, totally. And you have to be kind of looking, I'm just going to make this a head just a little bit smaller because I'm looking at that overall proportion, right? Right. So if that's the main gill plate, there's, um, and I don't have my trout anatomy down enough to know the, the term for this, but there's the gill structure on the bottom here. So I'm going to cut a line up to that back gill plate, right? Right. And then this is going to make kind of the gill structure that you're going to see on the bottom, right? Sure. Carry that back. And this front gill plate usually actually just kind of dies out here. Right. All right. Okay, so that's kind of basically a front end. And then we obviously have to think about some fins on this bad boy. Right. 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 So if you think about the dorsal fin is usually sort of central on the top, right? Sure. Maybe a little forward, but pretty central. And it's going to be like a triangle with a little chip in the back. Yeah. Now, keep in mind, the dorsal fin can collapse up and down. So all of these fins depend on the character of the fish and sort of what it's doing. But right. I like to draw like a pretty alert dorsal fin, right? Yeah. Like he's really up and going. Now, right. I'm just looking at the proportions here, like probably this whole thing should move back a little, tail back just a little. Right. Okay, but we're gonna let it rip. So dorsal fin is like a triangle. Right. So chip out of the back. And then the next fin is the adipose, right? The yeah. little tiny guy on the back, especially important for a steelhead as we know. Right. And then the bottom, we have the front two sets of fins are pairs, right? So there's one on each side. So we have the pectoral fin, 
right, comes in really like right tight on the gills here, right? right? And you can draw the pectoral fin a few different ways because that fin like really moves around a lot. Yeah, so you yeah. could draw that fin kind of tucked up tight like this. Right. Right. I like to draw that fin kind of in more of a like relaxed down triangular position. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like so. And then the next set of fins are the pelvic fins. And once again, it's two. So there's one on each side. Right. And they're going to be like just back from the start of the dorsal fin, maybe kind of central dorsal fin, right? So once again, we're gonna go sort of basic triangle pelvic fin, right? Sure. Okay. And then the anal fin is a single fin in the back here, and it's gonna kick off right at this sort of point that we've made here, right? And the the anal fin can be like really rounded or really squared off, kind of depending on the species or the individual. We're right. gonna do sort of a squared off one. Okay. So that gives us like the basic proportions of a trout outline with fins. Okay. Yeah. And that's, is that kind of, I mean, that's like kind of the premise for a lot of how you begin all these, right? I mean, absolutely. You got it. Yeah. Gotta I love find that structure. To, yeah, I love to draw like everyone like from the start like this. Right. Because they're all a little quirky and they're right. all a little different. But you know what? Every trout that you catch right. <laughs> is a little quirky and it's a little different. And some of them have kind of a big mouth. Right. Some of them have a big eye. Right. And, you know, so I do think that it gives like really unique character every time you draw a fish. If you right. just kind of start from scratch and you let it rip. Right. Um, so real quick here, like I would cut in a, a top highlight on this cheek um, right below the eye. That would be typical. And then the eye is going to be pretty far forward. You know, this is the, I think it's the maxillary is this little flap right here on the upper jaw. Make sure the eye is like kind of in the middle third of that maxillary there right it's farther forward than you think right right um yeah that's, that's a good point i feel like i would want to like send it back a little bit more and, <laughs> yeah i mean it's just intuitive to draw it further back it's like it's very far forward but you think about how a fish hunts and how it's oriented and that eye has to be really far forward right so push that eye pretty far forward and then you can have, you know, a lateral line to kind of keep you oriented if you're drawing whatever species you are. That's right. True. And then think about on the tail, like the meat of the tail actually comes back in in more of like almost a squared off fashion here. Yeah, it's like it's definitely like that three dimensional portion back. Yeah, up. the tail fin is going to start in from there, right. not, not from this base of the tail. Right. 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 And then if you want to give a little character and three dimension to your fish in this sort of classic profile, you can think about adding a, a shadow section of the mouth in the back. You know, the pectoral fin is a pair, so you can add another one in the back. The pelvic fin is a pair, so you can add another one in the back. Oh, right? nice. Yeah, yeah. And that immediately just gives like a little dimensionality to an otherwise like straight profile fish, which right. as you will see from what I have above here as a finished version I love to do. Right. And then obviously you can think about like the eye. I love drawing eyes that give life to the fish and a spot pattern, right? Right. And that's your uh, Trout 101. <laughs> that's it. That's pretty quick. I've seen you. Uh... I've seen you on your time lapses, and I'm sure some of the time lapses you do are hours long, right? I've never made it hours, no. <laughs> I should probably, John, but usually I make it like 20 minutes to an hour, and then I'm like, yeah, I'm done. Right, right. <laughs> um, so I, I, while we're kind of, uh, you know, continuing on with this week, I, I really want to highlight a lot of the artists, like I mentioned, that are doing work in conservation and, and they, they use their craft and their medium and their, their art to um, help the places that they're either depicting or, or, or they love or have a passion for. 
that do you think like yeah i mean what's uh, give me your take on like art and conservation like how and i'm kind of asking this to everybody to get their kind of opinion of it all week like you know what you do is storytelling and and how it helps in that way i i, I guess i'm curious to find out you know if you think art um has a role in influencing uh folks and and getting them out there or making them, you know, kind of stand up for something or, or taking action or anything like that. I do. I, I do think it has a place. I yeah. mean, I think anything that we do that connects us to the places that we love to recreate in or the animals that we love that are in those places, you know, so a beautiful rendition of, uh, native western species of trout and maybe you haven't heard of that native western species of trout and you're like right. wow that is a stunning coloration done by this artist right and that's a conversation and that's i i do think there's any number of spins you could take on how art does have a positive effect and a role in conservation from having a live you know a, a piece of art at a at a silent auction, at least back when we could go to those. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Remember to, those? <laughs> right. To, uh, you know, depicting that um, nostalgia, that, uh, that feeling of that fish and the place that it inhabits, um, or just the scene. Um, I think that's really important. And I think that is really valuable in a conservation setting. Right, right. Well, I appreciate that. And I, I wonder also, uh, uh, spinning off that, you know, when you're, when you're sitting, I got the, when you're either sitting in your studio doing a, a new piece, or if you're out on a river, um, say you catch a fish out there, does it ever run through your mind and you see a specific beauty of a fish that you've landed? Um, and after you release it, like, are you thinking about that fish? And like, man, I really want to kind of illustrate that thing or, or vice versa, when you're in the studio, do you ever think about, do you ever kind of like remember some of those moments that you have on the river too, when you're out there? Oh, definitely. I yeah. mean, they fuel each other. Yeah. But I mean, we've all been in those situations where you catch a fish that just has like some piece of amazing coloration, you know, maybe it's like a brown trout that has like white fin tips, almost like a brook trout or, you know, the spotting on the face of a rainbow that's just stunning, right? right. To me, immediately, I'm like, oh, I want to draw that somehow. <laughs> right. That's cool. Right. But also, there is a photography piece in there for me because I love catch capturing that moment with photography, and I don't have a photographic memory. So yeah. I love having some reference material. Yeah. Um, and the photography piece is, is a good way. Uh, yeah, and it's an element too. Sometimes it is what it is, and it's a photograph, and that's the end result, not a drawing. Right, right. You know? That makes sense too. Yeah, for sure. Right. Um, and, and I also want to say, I have uh, I've spent many days on the water with Garrison and Karen, and um, the one thing I really I love about you guys is your enthusiasm first and foremost. But second of all, like when I'm out there taking photos with you. You guys share this same, um, the ethic of how we hold the fish, how we net the fish, and, and how long we're, we're making sure that the photograph is taken rather quickly. And, you know, if we're doing this, we're planning kind of ahead and all that stuff. So I want to thank you guys for that. You know, the fish is rarely out of the water for more than five seconds. And it's, you know, uh, inch, a, inch above the water rather than, you know, feet above the water. Right. right? all that so well and you you and i both know if you have that camera on the right setting you can take a lot of photos in five seconds from right. a lot of different angles right <laughs> right right yeah. so it's, i mean it's always enjoyable absolutely and i recognize that when we're out there catching fish like it's not the best thing for the fish right it's right. never the best and right. you're stressing them out to a certain extent and uh, I do love to take a few photographs of a uh, beautiful fish. Right. Um, but I do think with some pretty simple guidelines, I mean, well, you know, you can do a pretty good job on keeping those guys back and swimming away. For sure. For sure. Well, uh, I'll, only, I'll only keep you on here a couple more, but uh, 
what's new for Rep Your Water this spring? What should we be looking for? If anyone's getting psyched about something, what, what should they go check out? Just Yeah, I appreciate that. We have our full spring li line is live on the Rep Your Water website. So go check it out, repyourwater.com. We have like a really fun, like full brim straw hat with a black under brim. So it's like really low glare on the bottom and a sewn edge. So it holds up a little bit more than uh, most straw hats out there. It's really Yeah, they fun. get beat up quick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, so yeah, it is well what loved. it is, but super cool. And then we have uh, some really nice new, like more technical shirts than we've ever had before. So some really nice, like collared, super lightweight shirts with vented backs that are great to fish in great UPF rating. And right. we have some hybrid versions that are uh, some of my personal favorites when it's when it's really warm out that are collared, super light vented back, but then also have an optional hood you can put up for sun protection. So yeah. it's sort of like the best functionality you could get out of a sun hoodie and an ultralight collared sun shirt. Right. Um, right. And it's called the hybrid shirt. So it's on there on the website. You can see it in the spring collection or you can just search for hybrid and you pull it up. Right, right. Cool. Yeah, I've seen those and I, I do. I mean, I think a lot of us actually enjoy the hoods and the long sleeves these days when we're out on the water, you know? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Hey, thanks. Thanks, Corinne, for putting that link up there. Um, also, uh, the links are on the blog on tu.org too. So give them a look. Um, Garrison's also, he sells a lot of his art. And I don't know, do you have any other art pieces behind you that you can show us? Or yeah, I do. I'm going to gonna actually just, actually, maybe Corinne's going to grab you guys here. Yeah, so this is actually sort of a debut here, Josh. This is the series that I'm calling my Western studs. So disregard, obviously, our, our little <laughs> tutorial here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a series that I'm calling our Western studs series. So this is a greenback cutthroat trout nice and then we have a fine spotted snake river and then this is a west slope sort of in full spawning regalia over here and those are beautiful this is one of my personal favorites here this is an apache from uh from way down south apache trout yeah this is a Rio grand cutty here nice. Nice. um so we have Prints available of all of these on the website right now. If you go to Rep Your Water Goods and hit Fine Art. Um, and there's a Bonneville around here somewhere too, but I didn't have room to pin them up on my board. So you have to check him out on the website. But I did some uh, compilations of all of them together on like a big poster style. Right. I have like a series of three all together, or you could do a print of each one individually. And they're all like G Clay. Uh, really nice archival prints too. So that's very cool. Uh, have you have you caught all these fish? Have you caught an Apache? I have not caught an Apache. That one's on my list. Yeah. Um, everything else, yes. Yeah, yeah. I was just curious about the Apache. That's always yeah. seems like a tough one, huh? Yeah, we might need to do a little road trip, buddy. Yeah, yeah. It's not yeah. too far down in Arizona, New Mexico. Yeah. It's well, as soon as we can cross state lines and not feel weird about it, maybe we can make that happen. Yeah, man. Well, um, I can't thank you guys both enough. Um, major props goes out to Corinne behind the camera. We saw her for five seconds before. There's her hand. <laughs> she um, actually keeps this train on the track, so we appreciate her. She certainly does, and um, and, and an amazing angler in her own right, too. Uh, I love watching you guys fish. I love watching you guys create art. I love all of it so um you know if uh if you guys get a choice to support uh, a great tu business uh definitely do it with rep your water and uh we look forward to getting out on the water with you guys and uh you know hopefully seeing some of the new products as they come out and uh looking forward to seeing some of your live events that you said you have going as well so um keep an eye on their their social media channels i'm sure they'll be putting that out too yeah you bet we appreciate you and uh to one of the most talented photographers i know and the best guys around thanks for having us buddy. well cheers right back at you buddy yeah. and uh we'll talk soon thank you guys right. cheers have a good night yeah you too